What's up, y'all? This is Rockland. Today on Passport Kings, we're gonna go over why Royal Caribbean is actually getting better than Carnival. Engage! Travel is my passion, passion, passion. PassportKings.com Your travel lifestyle will never be the same again. Subscribe and enable notifications so you can see all the other videos you may like. Alright, so the last time that I did a countdown about which cruise lines is the best, Carnival came in a high first. But I'm here to say that some things have changed over the last few years. Carnival had the most affordable four to seven day cruises, plus the atmosphere was young and friendly. I guess Royal Caribbean got the picture because recently they've done a lot of things to upgrade their experience and their services. While both cruise lines have ships ranging from their smaller, older vessels to their brand new mega ships, Royal Caribbean and Carnival's vessels definitely differ. Royal Caribbean is well known for having the largest cruise ships in the world. And while Carnival's ships can be of comparable length, the size of Royal Caribbean's biggest ships are very noticeable. I mean, Royal Caribbean's Symphony of the Sea is nearly 12,000 feet and carries more than 5,500 guests. Carnival's Vista is a full 120 feet shorter and carries under 4,000 passengers. So when it comes to size, Royal Caribbean definitely has an edge. Well, when it comes to ports and drop-offs for the day, this is where Royal Caribbean really shines. Royal has not only one, but two private islands in their own respective countries. Coco Cay, formerly known as Sterrick Cay, is a bohemian island located between the popular cruise ports of Freeport and Nassau. And as you know, all of the Bahamas are outstanding. Like when you visit Atlantis or go jet skiing, snorkeling, parasailing, or scuba diving, like a king, everyone knows that it's more fun to do it in the Bahamas. In 1990, Royal Caribbean started leasing the 140-acre plot of land, which features beaches, shopping venues, and activities exclusively for passengers sailing with Royal Caribbean or sister line celebrity cruises. Royal Caribbean's Labadee is a 260-acre private beach resort carved out of Haiti's rolling, densely forested north coast. A typical day might include snorkeling, filling up a plate or two at the all-you-can-eat barbecue, ziplining across the water on a 2,600 foot long dragon's breath flight line, or snoozing soundly in a beach chair. And of course, going to Key West in Florida could be just as fun. As you may know from my previous video, I am very fond of Key West. There's, a, there's like a Twilight Zone vibe there. Well, it's too hard to explain without dedicating a whole video to Key West, so I have to do that at some point. So you know I like to say the first thing that you'll notice. And the first thing that you'll notice while walking out of your room, you hear your name being called in a faint accent. You'll wonder who the heck you know on the boat. Housekeeping will know you by name within the first hour of you stepping foot into your room. It may not sound like a lot, but having a friendly staff who make it their business to know you on a first name basis and let you know that they appreciate you joining them for the next few days is the real icing on the cake. The next thing you'll notice is the prices of drinks. <laughs> I thought the drink package was a terribly expensive idea. Right now they're charging $300 for one person or $450 for two people if you share the same room. I was like, no way when this price was told to me. But right after the safety demonstration in the mustard station, I went and brought around the drinks for everyone who was with me. When looking at the bill, which was almost 50 bucks, it became apparent to me that I would easily spend more than $300 by the time we was finished with the five nights. I got the package, and even though I would still buy drinks while we were on the islands, knowing that I could have as many of whatever top shelf liquor I wanted on the boat was peace of mind. If you drink, I suggest you get your drink package within hours of first boarding the ship. It sounds terrible at first, but when you do the math, it's really a good idea. The cheap ship called Grand Bahama Cruises, they still beat both of them when it comes to drink packages because they let you buy your own bottle while boarding the ship for the first time, which you can drink during the cruise, 
no other ship I've been on lets you do that. Of course, the prices of the bottles are marked up, but the savings is incredible when you don't have to go to the bar spending $15 to $20 each visit for a drink. Now, when it comes to cruise food, I've really never had a bad experience. Even cruises with super duper reduced rates have cooks that you can tell takes food prep seriously. The buffets are really all you need to pick out during breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The selections are sometimes themed, but they will have a little bit of everything. Even for vegans, your selections will be vast. And if you want to go get a bite to eat after hours like 3 a.m. to 5 a.m., the ship that I was on gives you the option of all kinds of pizza on the 12th floor and a great deli which allow you to create fancy sandwiches in the middle of the night. I have to admit that on every cruise that I've ever been on, I have been the person waking up in the middle of the night hungry. <laughs> and honestly, all cruises have a pretty limited option when it comes to eating at that time of night. But if you just wait an hour or two, breakfast will start being served anyway. Oh, and one tip I have when you're at dinner, don't limit yourself to one entree. Order two and the wait staff will bring it to you. Remember you on a cruise and one of the main things to do on a cruise is pig out. Then regret it a couple of days later when you realize how much weight you gained. <laughs> but what really changed my mind about who's king of the seas was the notable changes in the atmosphere. The vibe was no longer like the ship for the old stuffy conceited snobs. Royal has turned cool. The nightclub played music that you would find in a regular club. The people cruising actually participated in the events that the staff was throwing. And I know that that can be tricky depending on who just happens to be cruising on the same few days as you. But on this particular ship, everybody seems to be there just to have a good time and not look at each other like they have attitude problems. And again, the fact that you have two super cool islands to choose from makes it a no-brainer for people who just love visiting different cultures. Like most preferences, the decision of which cruise line is better is subjective. Many people are unwavering fans of one ship over another. I was like that with Carnival for years. And when you're like that, you don't really want to hear anything to the contrary. And to be honest, both are about 80% the same thing. But it's that extra 20% that will sway you one way or another. Big ships with a lot to do and a cruise attention to detail is what will make or break the experience. And speaking of that experience, I am throwing an extra huge cruise coming up next year in 2020 around June and July. So I want you to go to my Facebook page and uh, just let me know if you're interested in going. We're going to go. We're going to have a really good time. And I hope that all of you guys can join us. And don't forget to look down below. I now have those Passport Kings t-shirts for sale. And you can buy them straight off of the YouTube website. And as usual, come to my website if you want to learn how to make money online so you can travel more. That's www.passportkings.com. All right, so the next time that you decide to go on a cruise, make sure that you have a state-of-the-art experience and go with Royal Caribbean like the king of passport.